Hello and welcome to this video tutorial for users of Excel 2016 for the Mac. In this tutorial we're going to start looking at creating and working with tables in Excel. Then you can think of a table as simply an organized collection of information. The table I'm going to create here is for a small business called Fred's Classic Movie Screenings as you can see. The first thing I'm going to do is create the column labels for my table. So I'm going to leave a blank row between the title cells and the table itself. So I'm going to click into cell A4 and type in my first column label and that will be sale code. And I'll press the right arrow key to come along to column B. So in cell B4, I'm just going to type the word movie. So that will have the movie title. Next, we will have the screening month. So next we will have the area. So the region where the film is being screened the name of the person selling the tickets, the ticket quantity sold, and next the ticket price, and finally we want to work out the total sales. So this will be a column containing a formula. There are my labels for the table and I'm going to do a bit of formatting before I move on and start to create the records for the table. So let's just select those cells there first of all. And I'm going to apply bold formatting and also click on the wrap text button there that you've seen before. And the benefit of that, of course, is that I can keep my columns a sensible width for the data contained in the column. Now I'm going to make some additional changes. I'm actually going to go into my sale code cell there and just double click at the end of the word sale. And I'm going to type the keyboard shortcut Alt and Enter, which forces a line break. I'll just delete the extra space. I'll press the tab key this time to come across. And I'm going to do the same thing on ticket price. So if I just double click again into the cell there, put the cursor at the end of the word ticket, again, Alt and Enter, just delete the space. Tab across and I'll do the same thing with total sale. Again, just double click. Just make sure I'm at the end of the word again, Alt and Enter, delete the space, press the Enter key this time. And you will have noticed there that when I press the enter key after correcting total sale, the highlighted cell is now A5. So it's actually jumped back to the beginning of row five. And that's the benefit of using the tab key to move across as you enter information. So I'll enter my first entry in my table then, or my first record, if you prefer to use database terminology. And I'm going to type the number one. Again, I'll press the tab key to move across and type in the film title, which in this case is Casablanca. Again, the tab key to move across to the next cell. The screening month will be December. Tab key again. The area is going to be north. The ticket seller is Fred. The ticket quantity is 12. And finally, the ticket price is £3.75. And I'm going to press the enter key. So I'm going to skip the total sale column. And you see there the benefit of using the tab key again. We jump back to the beginning of the next row. Before I enter my next record, I'm going to do one last bit of formatting onto my column headers there. And so I'll select everything from A4 across to H4 there. And in the alignment section on the Home tab, I'm going to click the center button for horizontal center. And I'll also click the middle align button there. So they're centered horizontally and vertically. So with that done, let's go back to cell A6 and carry on. The record number is two. And again, press the tab key to move across. Movie title will be Gone With The Wind. And you'll notice there that clearly the title is encroaching onto column C. So if I press the tab key now, enter my screening month, which is November, and tab across. And you'll see there that the month name has obviously cut off the film title. And that's something I'll fix later on. The area is South. Again, keep tabbing across. Seller is Lisa. Ticket sold 18 and ticket price 395. Again, press the return key, jump back to the beginning of the next row, type the record number three, tab across. This is another sale for Casablanca. And if I just type the letter C, you'll see that Excel recognizes the previous entry and is now offering that as an autocomplete. If I didn't want that, I could simply continue to type. I want to accept this, so I'm going to press the tab key to move across. You can also, of course, just press the enter key or the arrow keys. It just happens that I'm using the tab key to move across here. 
and it's the same month so if I just type the letter D again Excel offers me that autocomplete so I'll just tab through uh, area is north so again just type the letter M again I can tab through different seller this time it's going to be Jane tab across again number of tickets sold 15 and the sale price is four pounds and if I now press the return key again we jump back to the beginning of the row so record number four the film is Vertigo a Hitchcock classic the month is October area is East again tab through and the seller is Fred but rather than type it or type the first letter and get Excel to offer an autocomplete I'll show you a different way of entering data by using a previous entry in the column and that's to put the mouse pointer over the cell where you want to complete right mouse click and one of the options there is to pick from drop down list so if I click on that you'll see there it offers me a list of the existing entries in the column and I can choose my seller from that list which is Fred in this case and then simply continue on tab through so number of tickets 14 price 395 and again just press the return key now I'm going to complete my formula for total sale now so I'm going to come to cell H5 where I want my first result to appear press equals on the keyboard click on the ticket quantity in row 5 multiply on the keyboard and click on the ticket price and I'll just press the enter key so there we have the first result and I'm going to use the copy option at the bottom right of the cell you'll remember we get the black cross and I can click and drag down to complete those four cells and I'll enter one more record so we'll go to the beginning of the row there just click this time number five on the keyboard and the film this time is Star Wars screening in October and again I can just use the autocomplete for that the area is south and again use the autocomplete the seller is Jane again just use the autocomplete makes things nice and simple speeds the process up ticket sold 10 and the price is three pounds 95 and now I'll press the return key I won't go into the calculation cell and when I press return you'll see there that Excel has automatically put the calculation in there for me but when you're creating tables that involve calculations you'll notice that at a certain point Excel does begin to auto complete calculations and that point is record number five that was my observation so for the first four records you would have had to complete the calculation manually as I did but when you get to the fifth record and beyond Excel will automatically insert the calculation and I'll demonstrate that one more time if I enter record number six and this is vertigo again so I can simply go through type the V the month is October area is East and the seller this time is Tom a different seller ticket quantity 12 three pounds fifty the price and again press the return key and you'll see that Excel puts the calculation in for me automatically the table autocomplete is switched on by default in Excel but if you want to switch it off or if for some reason it's not working for you and you want to check why what you need to do is come up to the top of the screen and go to the Excel menu so if I click on the Excel menu go to preferences and what you'll see here is we have formulas and lists as one of the section and at the right side of that we have tables and filters so if you click on tables and filters what you're looking for is to make sure you have a check or a tick in automatically fill formulas or if you don't want that feature simply remove the check mark but I do want it so I shall leave it active and just close down that dialog and before I go on and complete this table I need to fix my column B of course you can see there the title of Gone with the Wind is not complete at the moment it's being chopped off by the entry in column C so I'll just put the mouse pointer between the column header there B and C get the two-way arrow and I'll just double click to auto expand the column there I'm going to carry on and enter a few more records and when you return you'll see the completed table and here is the completed table I'll show you a few navigation options for getting around in a table and some of these no doubt you'll be familiar with one of the obvious ones is to use the scroll wheel on the mouse so if I just scroll down my table you'll see that we have a total of 50 records here you can also navigate with the window scroll bars so if I come over to the right side of the Excel window you'll see there the scroll bar appears when the mouse pointer gets close click and drag to scroll the table up or down 
And I also have the horizontal scroll bar. So again, just move the mouse pointer to the bottom of the window. The scroll bar appears and you can drag left and right. You can also use the keyboard to navigate. So if I just click anywhere in the table. Now, if I press the end key on the keyboard, followed by the right arrow key, you'll see that Excel jumps me to the last column of the table there. If I press the end key, followed by the left arrow key, I go to the first column. And again, if I press the end key, followed by the up arrow, I jump to the first row in the table, the column header row. And if I press the end key, followed by the down arrow, I jump to the final row in the table there. And if you have your table positioned somewhere near the top left of the spreadsheet, you can always use the keyboard shortcut Control and Home, and that will take you back to cell A1. One common problem with long tables of data is that as I scroll through my table, eventually those column headers will disappear. And sometimes it can be unclear what the entries in each of the columns are referring to. And it might be useful to have those column headers in view all the time. And there's an option in Excel that will help you with that. So if I come across to cell A5, just click into that. And I'm going to go to the View tab. And underneath the View tab, you have this Window section here. And the first button there is Freeze Panes. If I click on that, and now as I scroll down, you'll see the column headers remain in view all the time, which can be quite useful. Now, if you change your mind and you want to remove that freeze pane option, you simply go back to the same section there under the view tab and now click the button. The name has changed to unfreeze. And if I click on that, the table is back as it was. There is also an option for viewing different parts of a table simultaneously. So I might want to view some records from the top of my table and some records from the bottom. Now I can't do both at the same time at the moment. And if I zoomed out, to a ridiculous level, I might not be able to read the content. So I need some way of fixing that problem. And the solution is to use this split option. So I'm just going to click anywhere at all in the table. And once again, come to the window section under the view tab. And this time click the split button there. And you'll notice I now get a horizontal and vertical gray line. And if I come down to the scroll bars, you'll see I've got two horizontal scroll bar. So I've got a left hand scroll bar and a right hand scroll bar. And on the vertical side, I've also got two vertical scroll bars. So I can scroll up and down at the top and up and down at the bottom. Now I'm going to remove the vertical split line here by putting the mouse pointer on that line and just dragging it to the left of the window. And that removes that. And then I can position the gray line, the horizontal line somewhere in the middle, scroll to the left of the table, with the scroll bar and now I can scroll up on the upper half of the window to see the top half of the table and I can scroll down on the bottom half of the window and so now I can simultaneously view some records at the top of my table and at the bottom and when I finish doing whatever it was I was doing I go back to the window section again click the split button and the split is removed one thing to note is that you can't use freeze and split at the same time. But finally, before I move on, I'm just going to go back to cell A5 and click on freeze panes and again, lock that top row. One thing I will actually just quickly mention, if I just unfreeze again and come to cell B5 and click on freeze panes, what you'll notice there is that column A and everything above row five is locked. So if I scroll to the right, you will notice that column A is fixed as well. So basically when you apply the freeze, the cell you click on, what you're going to fix is everything to the left of the selected cell and everything above the selected cell. However, finally, what I'll do here is just unfreeze again, go back to cell A5, click on freeze, and that will just fix my top row, my column headers. Next, we're going to look at formatting the table and a few of Excel's special table features. And to apply those, I'm going to go to the Insert tab and click on the Table button there. So you'll find the Table section and the Table button is the one on the right. And if I click on that, we get a dialog box and you'll also see the selection indicator there, these marching ants, the marquee box around the table. And you can confirm the range here. It's A4 down to H54. 
which is correct. Uh, my table has headers, has a check-in, which is also correct because the table does indeed have headers and almost all tables will do. So I'm simply going to click OK. And immediately there you see we have the formatting applied. It might not be the formatting that you want, it's the default formatting. But if I just click away from the table, you can see more clearly there what the formatting looks like. So we have this banding on the table now. The row is our banded, so a dark and light shading. We also have additional formatting on the column header, the labels. And we have the drop down arrows there for each column. And those are filter buttons, which we will be looking at in the next tutorial. Now, if I click back onto the table, you will see there we have a new tab in the toolbar area called table. There's a number of options here for formatting the table. Under table style options, you can see there we have the header row with a check. We have the filter button here. I'm going to remove the filters for now. So I'm going to click on that to uncheck. Uh, we also have the banded rows option and the banded columns option. So if I take the check out of banded rows and click on banded columns instead, you'll see the difference there. You can also apply special formatting to the first column and you can also apply special formatting here to the last column. But I'm going to remove the ticks from both of those boxes there. And over on the right side, you see we have this table style section. And if you don't like the one that's automatically applied, you can choose a different style and if you want to see more options click on the drop down button and you'll see there we have quite a few to choose from they have light options medium options and dark options depending on which style you prefer so if I go to this medium section and choose this one here in the third row called table style medium 21 if I click on that you'll see we get something very different again so there's quite a few choices you have in terms of formatting if you don't like any of the applied formatting options, come back to the table styles, go to the very top left option in the light section, and the very top left option there is none. And what I'm left with is basically the bold formatting that I applied myself at the beginning. One final thing I'll show you here in the style options is the total row. So if I click on the total row button there, and if we scroll down to the end of the table, Take a look over on the right in the total sale column, you see we now have a grand total. And I can also apply that total to any of the other columns. So if I want to know my totals for ticket quantity, if I click into that cell, cell F55, click on the drop down arrow that you can now see. And I've got a range of options here. So if I want to do the sum calculation, work out the total, click on the sum option. So there's the grand total of the ticket quantity sold. If I click on the drop down again, then I might want to work out the average ticket sale. And there we see that on average, 14.48 tickets are sold per transaction. Click on the drop down arrow again, and I might choose the max option. And that tells me that the highest quantity sold in that range of transactions is 30. And again, I might go back to the sum option finally. So you have quite a few options there. And if I change my mind again and I no longer want the total to be shown, I can click on the drop down and choose none. And that removes the total from that particular cell. And if once you finish your analysis, you no longer want the total row to be shown, simply go back to the table tab and just uncheck the total row option. And it's removed there, as you can see. Now that just about completes this tutorial, but one final thing I'm going to fix. And if I scroll back up to the table there, you can see in the frozen section, I have rows two, three, and four showing, but not row one. So row one has mysteriously disappeared. And what's happened there basically is I wasn't fully scrolled to the top of the table before I applied the freeze. So as things stand, row one is going to be permanently invisible, which is my spreadsheet title, and I want that to be shown. All I need to do is go to the view tab again, unfreeze first of all, and now just make sure that my Fred's Classic Movie Screenings title is showing. Go back to cell A5, apply the freeze, and there we go. I can scroll up and down and still see all my titles and column headers. That completes this first look at tables, and I hope you've seen some things there that you can apply to the tables you're working on in Excel. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.